Obviously great to be in the Tri-Cities, have a couple uh, items to address, uh, to announce. And uh, first of all, we're excited to say that Jack Jacob Gilliam will be going on scholarship at the University of Tennessee. Uh, very well deserved, very earning of that. And that's one of the rewards of being a football coach when you can call him and say you've worked yourself into a scholarship. And that's what our program is all about. Uh, being in the Tri-Cities, I also would like to announce that Devon Swafford uh, will also go on scholarship. And uh, that's very exciting as well, very well deserved. We asked a lot of him as a true freshman last year, and uh, he's earned that. So I'll answer any questions you may have. What's the status on Pick Howard? Can you, can yep. you give us an update on that? Did he clear the 10 player panel? Well, uh, it's work in progress. Uh, our player staff laid out some requirements. Uh, that he must adhere to, and that's not just now, that's throughout the entire course of the summer. Uh, but one of the requirements was getting up to speed academically, stay up here for many term. He's, he's decided to do that. He's enrolled in classes. He'll be working out with the team. But uh, the requirements, the expectations that have set forth uh, will be ongoing throughout the summer months. Other than the one-loss record, how will you measure progress this year? Well, we have to continue to grow and develop as a football team, and we're going to be exceptionally young with only 12 seniors. So we must continue to grow and progress from the start of training camp all the way to game 12. And so that's the big thing. And, and with this young football team is having a theme of one, you know, one practice at a time, one day at a time, uh, you know, one opponent at a time, just everything is about winning that day, winning that moment. And that's how you raise a young football team. So I think we'll see progress each and every day. This Harold freshman class, can you talk about how uh, obviously they've been getting a lot of accolades, but they haven't played yet. How do you and the coaching staff make sure they don't realize that just getting to Tennessee was like the end game for them? Well, I think the, the great thing about this incoming class is we had 14 newcomers that enrolled at mid-year. So let me tell you something. They have communicated well with the 18 individuals that will be joining us here in about a week. And uh, about the standard, the expectations, uh, building up your work capacity, and just the overall mindset. So they're well aware what lies in store of them so those 14 individuals will be great resources for the 18 individuals joining us along with our veteran and older players which for those 18 guys you've obviously talked a lot about them just how much have you and your staff or what what can you do and what have you done to try to help them you know show up the campus kind of ready for what they're going to be uh, going into the summer well you try to communicate with them all their needs that they will have and you know we have very strong relationships with them as we do with all of our players but really the communicative end of it and uh, finishing school strong high school strong we always talk about leaving your legacy because you always want to be able to go back one day so finishing strong academically at their high schools and being ready to go but again I go back the greatest asset or resource that we've had are our 14 mid-year enrollees speaking with the other 18 individuals of really what to expect in, in coming to campus now. You got a lot of, obviously, several walk-ons there. You had your women's treat, but all of them on scholarship. But what was it about Jacob and, and Swaffer individually that sort of you know, got them on scholarship? Well, it's a, it's a work ethic. You know, it's, it's everything that goes into it. Uh, you know, it's the, the ability to uh, handle adversity and persevere. You know, they're very, very consistent in their approach. And not only are they helping us on the football field, they're doing well in the classroom. And just as well as, you know, deciding who to put on scholarship with their on the field performance and what they bring in the locker room to the team, it's every bit about their academic performance as well. And, you know, we'll probably have one more individual that we'll announce very soon that will be going on scholarship. But uh, so there's a lot that goes into it, but we want to reward the players in our football program that adhere to the standard and the expectation and help us winning. And uh, those two individuals have done that. And they, again, that's one of the exciting things about being a coach is being able to present them and their family with a scholarship because I know they've worked exceptionally hard for that. Specifically for Jacob, I mean, a senior guy who's obviously this program's been through a lot since he's been here. What does it say about his, maybe his patience level? Right. And, Well, I think it, it speaks volumes. It means everything. You know, he's been through a lot. Uh, we've asked a lot out of him. And again, he's persevered. Uh, he's handled adversity. But he is an individual who came with a work ethic each and every day. So we're very excited about him. And it, I think it's a great illustration to a lot of our younger players as well.
Can you touch on some of the other uh, local players, Crowder, Downs, yep. and Foreman, how they are looking uh, heading into summer here? Well, Matt Crowder continues to be kind of the staple of the offensive line, kind of the captain, and that's what we expect from our centers. Uh, he brings a level of toughness and uh, a pride as well, so I'm excited about him. Uh, Brendan Downs is recovering from off-season surgery. We expect him to be 100% coming back, and then Malik Foreman is an individual that continues to develop, and we're going to continue to need more, more from him as we continue to progress and move forward as well. Were you surprised that the schedule was going to stay at eight, eight conference games? Did that really surprise you really? No, it didn't. You know, we had, you know, reasonings for eight, for nine, but at the end of the day, it's what's best for the Southeastern Conference in moving forward. And the big thing for us was being able to maintain the Tennessee-Alabama rivalry, which I think is one of the best in the country. So we have that. And at the end of the day, it's all about continuing to grow and elevate the SEC. What did you learn in the first year at Tennessee that will help you the most in year two? Well, I think, first of all, I know much more about the league in general. Uh, but our football program and where we're at and where we need to go and how we need to get there. So I think that was the big thing is just learning the lay of the land. Uh, you know, in one year will be so much better and then year two, year three, and year four and so on and so forth. But I think just the overall thing within the SEC is there are no off days. You know, the competition from top to bottom, anybody can beat anybody. And so you have to be ready to play. But also, you know, with this great conference is the ability to win on the road. You know, every week when you go on the road, you're playing in hostile environments. And so you have to be mentally tough. Uh, you have to be strong mentally, physically. And you have to have great leadership to be able to prove that you can win on the road. How much tougher is that with young guys? Well, it is. It's going to be a great challenge, only having 12 seniors. And so we're going to have to grow up in a hurry. And that's why we just have to focus on the moment each and every day. We can never get ahead of ourselves. We have to have great consistency and performance. Uh, we have to continue to demand. We have to continue to have every moment be a teaching moment. Uh, we have to get bigger. We have to get stronger. And it's like raising your kids. We're going to be exceptionally young, but it's also invigorating. It's exciting. Our patience, I think, will be challenged. But uh, again, they're very, very talented but we have to continue to develop them. And I think our older players have really done a great job of really building their work capacity. You know, we have more individuals staying here at many term than we've ever had in the history of our program. I think that speaks volumes to what's going on within the four walls of the Anderson Training Center and uh, also in our locker room. Thanks, guys. Very good.